there's the lineup. We've got gonna have Fruity Pebbles going in, Gelato OG going in, Alaska Purple going in, cheese, and uh, blueberry. What I'm gonna do right now is put some water in these trays, get this soil um, real wet. So what I do is I've shown it before. Um, these cups will wick up, so put water in a tray. So these cups will wake up. So I gotta make sure it's really um, watered in good because I'm putting seeds in. And then once I see the seeds sprout, that's when I stop. I don't flood the trays no more. Um, I let them grow. I cut off the water completely. Should not need it unless the cups weigh lighter than this, the fresh soil. So it's pretty simple. Biggest mistake most new growers make and some uh, continuous growers have make is overwatering seedlings and all that. So they are gonna go on fresh fox farm ocean soil once again. So all the snowflakes that are panicking, screaming, sound the alarm, spinning around, whistles blowing. Um, of the burn that it can cause to the seeds. Um, this literally did what, two two big runs on doing the exact same thing. So I must have magical soil. We'll see. Could be sensitive too. We'll see if any of these uh, seeds are sensitive to mutes. But I've never had a problem, so I'm doing it straight in. If I had warrior. Or a bag of frog laying around I would just use that but in most cases all I have is the ocean so that's what I use so I'm gonna use once again so I'm gonna get that going flood these trays and I'll come back I'm just gonna pour a bunch of water in here and watch and see if they all wake up so I'm getting them nice and packed that's the other thing is I want them packed I don't want the seeds to drift downward I never water seedlings from the top, ever, ever. If anything, what I'll do daily, if not twice a day, is I'll take a spray bottle and mist it. But you don't want to water it because you could, the seed could come up or get pushed too far down, all that stuff. So I guess for me, if I was asked a question, what's the hardest part of growing? This is it right here for me. This is the hardest part. Um, planting too deep, too high, uh, different soils, dense, different sensitivities on the um, seedlings, all that. Once they all grow, you know, four inches or so, it's it's cake work from there. Once they get to, you know, this size, it's it's great. It's it's actually simple. So um, here's a look of it turning up already. Uh, see this one right there. That's from the training videos. It's already done. It's not even been a full day yet. So like I said, everything will turn up and do all that. Uh, back on track. Seedling video. So I'll make sure these are packed nice. Um, so I don't get the seed floating around. And I try to be as consistent as I can be when I'm putting the seeds down in. So uh, it's probably about, I would say half inch down in the soil is what I go for so you'll know when you get about like a quarter inch or so a lot of times I you'll have the it'll break through in the seat the shell will be stuck on I rather have that than too deep sometimes too deep what it can do is it'll take a while to sprout that's why you'll see me a lot of times on ones that don't I just let them sit for days on end sometimes it takes 10 extra days and a lot of that's just because it was just too deep it happens but let me water these let me get going it's gonna be a long seedling video
pouring a gallon in each tray. And I'm gonna let this sit for a little while, about 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. And I'll come back and see if they're all wicked up. I could tell by the light color, it's a light tan. You can see I got a little bit of water there where it's dark. So I'll be looking for that and obviously I'll pick them up. So I'll come back and do that. I'll do this now. Filled up the water bottles. That's for the spring. It's got to be done daily because I'm not putting domes over them. And that's the other thing I don't like to do because that causes, that can cause another shock uh, when you're switching up environment. Like it's a weed, so it adapts to most environments. Um, if you, it's like a clone in a way. If you get the plant accustomed to high humidity in a dome, and then you take it out, you can, you can cause shock, especially the snowflake seeds yeah there's snowflake people and there's snowflake seeds in this world unfortunately you can't get rid of them but uh for the sensitive aka snowflake uh seeds they uh can have problems when you switch up their environment like that going from high humidity to no humidity clones will do that too if you have them in a dome you go from 100 percent or 90 percent humidity and you just take the dome off nine times out of ten uh, plants are gonna go south on you so you gotta kind of milk them down so with my seeds this is the way I've done it it's the way I do it it's the way I've, I've done uh, every now and then when I get bored when I want to do it differently I'll do it in the shoe box with the paper towels and the ziplocs I do it that way um, I never soak the seeds uh, in a glass of water I still don't understand why that even was created and why some seeds recommend that because you know, just never uh, in my life had to do that uh, once you put them around moisture in a towel or soil and all that they, they do what they do and they sprout so you know, it's kind of odd but I guess there's still some people that do that um, if your seed like takes that to hatch that's kind of retarded but anyways it's kind of like growing any kind of plants just moisture darkness soil uh, creates the seeds to pop it's so, not that difficult here these are all uh, regular seeds or I shouldn't say that photo period seeds I use that term so uh, that's why they're all in solar cups and not being planted in their final pots so they'll probably mostly go from uh, The solo cups to maybe the one or two gallon pots some will go in bigger depends on the room and what do I need to fill up? Uh, a flower room or a bedroom. It's all on scheduling so We'll see uh, I'll, uh, Like I said, I'll come back wait for the soil to wake up it's already getting heavy it doesn't take that long it'll probably take uh, all these will probably take over a half a gallon easy we'll see here we'll do a true test I poured a gallon in each one they're not even full trays I could fit more in here and spread them out so I got the five white widows the blueberries the fruity pebbles a lot of OG and then Alaskan purple and cheese are in here. I might move the cheese over here. Right. This is what it is. I haven't planted them yet. They're all sitting right there. And we'll be back. Alright, what I did is I just took a marker. About right there. It's about a half inch. To every single one of these. So, you should get them out of the dry area. And the soil is going to dry on that very top layer of a sixteenth of an inch. It'll be dry pretty quick. So we're going to start in order. We're going to do the cheese. It's these three. A 
little tiny baby seeds. Uh, I don't expect much from this plant, but you never know. Alaska purple. Next is gelato LG. Pebbles. medium sized seeds light in color Not too happy to see that but that one's a decent one it's got a more brown color the three I just planted we'll see if they grow I don't like how light they were next up blueberry More medium sized seeds. Got a brownish brownish color to them. That's all right. okay, next up, probably the best looking seeds, the widows. Brown with the stripes on them. I would say large seeds. Okay, we got them all planted. I'm just going to lightly cover them up. Hopefully the next three to five days they'll break ground. I'm going to follow up with the mister. Scream. Not packing it down that hard, just lightly, lightly making it surface level.
should be enough. And then be doing this exact same thing here, spraying them about once or twice a day. Um, probably twice a day to begin with. Uh, paying attention to the color of the soil is going to be key. Until they pop, I want to make sure the soil stays this color. So it'll be nice and dark. And then I will, that's what I'll be checking on a couple times a day to keep it like this. Once I see them breaking ground, that's when I completely stop. No more. I let it dry out. Um, at that point you don't need it they don't need it uh, all you're gonna do is cause root rot or stunt their growth if you get them wet so as soon as they break ground that's when you cut off all the watering and let them start sprouting it'll take them a while to get their roots down and they'll have plenty of water uh, the inch below the soil level so I'll probably be filling these trays up maybe once unless they pop before they get empty so it's about 55 percent humidity in this room or so right now i have to go look that being said it, that's gonna help with the water uh, not evaporating too fast you got a real dry area the evaporation will be high So with all the seeds planted there. So once again, we got the cheese, Alaskan purple, fruity pebbles, blueberry, and white widow. And we'll check the, let's see, we're at about 50% humidity right now. And we're warm, that's what we want. I'm going to bring the temperatures 85-ish. Uh, warm temperatures are really good for seedlings. Uh, they will sit there in that wet soil if it drops, gets too cold. 70 below or below, it's going to just sit there. So <clears throat> warm temps are going to be good. I should make these sprout pretty fast. In the wintertime, I have to put the mats over there, the heat mats. I actually do these trays over there in my clone section because it's too cool for them but that's it and these girls will be getting an update here as soon as they pop ground I'll come back on this is the seeds planted which is just um uh,